In this video, we're going to do a code walkthrough of creating a choropleth map using v3.js. Choropleth maps are a great way to demonstrate some kind of characteristic associated with a geographic boundary, which can be anything. And in this case, it's counties and then unemployment rates. And um, so we're talking about unemployment rates um, back in 2016 using a kind of threshold skill where we have darker colors and lighter colors to show higher unemployment and lower unemployment. So if I go ahead and hover over one of the counties, I get a little tooltip that says 11.8 in this case, um, one of the lower ones, 3.3, and a very light one here that shows 1.9%. So this data comes from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, a kind of um, statistical authorities that lots and lots of countries have. Um, and I should say about this example here that we're going to explore, it's based off of an example created by Mike Bostock um, back in 2019 using an earlier version of um, d3.js. So I think it was version 4 and I'm using version 7. I haven't embellished this example in any way, um, purely just up the version and fixed any breaking lines of code so that works for the, the later version. So you can kind of try and compare it like for like, if you like, like for like if you like, wow. Okay, anyway, um, first thing to look at is the composition of the graphic itself. So I'm gonna start by using my element inspector here and opening up uh, the SVG element inside of the document. So, First thing we have an SVG with a certain width and height. Inside we find there's two groups and the third element here is a path. So the first one um, you can see quite easily is just pretty much just the um, the label showing the, uh, the color and the employment rate that visualizes that we're we have you know we're using as a legend and um, to indicate what's higher and lower and what we mean by higher and lower in this case so we're talking about unemployment rates from zero to two and two to three two to four etc etc and with the darker blues indicating a much more unfortunate rate of unemployment so that's the key here and it's composed of rectangles and using the fill color our kind of threshold fill colors and some text at the bottom, we've got the, per, the percentage points. Um, now in the middle here, we've got a group with over 3,140 uh, elements, and these are the, each individual counties. And you can see here, um, quite small, but you can see the fill color that corresponds to those kind of threshold rates we saw in the legend. Finally, we have one um, path which has a class of states and that helps us indicate that this is actually just the, um, it's a one single path that it is drawing, in this case, it's drawing the, the state boundaries. So if I go ahead and delete this, you'll see that kind of white lines in between the, the states disappears. I'm gonna refresh this so we get it back. There, there they are. Right, great. Okay, so there's there are two um, bits of data that we need to create this visualization. One is the unemployment data itself, and the other is the kind of geographic data that we're going to use to draw the different boundaries and uh, the counties. So um, the unemployment data comes in the form of a tab separated value file. So TSV is um, pretty simple, it's just text for each row we've got are um, separated on different lines are a uh, essentially like a row and and we have two columns one being the id which is um, a unique identifier for each county in the us and the second value here the rate is unemployment value which is a percentage pretty raw data format not much to it a lot more sophisticated then is actually the um, the geographic data set, which is, comes in the form of JSON and specifically in, the, in a, a standard format called um, TopoJSON. So later we're gonna be using a, um, I'll refer back to TopoJSON and the library um, that we use to help convert um, 
a JSON file into uh, the drawing of a um, of the US. So in this top of JSON file, which is just a normal JSON file, but it's just following a, st a standard format. So this is where we have um, what you can see here are the counties, uh, states, and the US itself. So um, in the ca in the county, we've got a list of all geometries. And in with the geometries, we get um, what calls arc. Um, it's actually that's the geographic information, and you can see there's an ID here. So we know that we can um, identify and index these different um, collection of geometry, as it's been called in this file, with the ID that we've got in our unemployment TSV. So. Um, we've had a look at kind of what the what, what's produced by visualization and what the data is in there. So we'll have a go ahead and switch over to the code and take a look around. So in this case, it's just a single HTML file, and in this HTML file, we've got um, we're including three scripts: D3 version seven, Topo JSON, which is a library that helps us um, read those Topo JSON um, files. And the final one is D3Fetch. So D3Fetch is a library that helps us go off to um, remote sources of data. So it might be your JSON file. Um, in, and, and like in our case, our geographic JSON file is hosted um, on a content delivery network or on another website. And we're going off, getting it and parsing it. And then we're going to um, feed it into our d 3 uh, rendering functions. So um, before we've done any JavaScript or we've done anything in terms of using D3, um, we've added a single SVG element to the HTML. Um, now going moving into the script tag here, we have a um, we've effectively got uh, we're setting up a few variables to get started. They're kind of one-off variables that we need. Um, so we've got the SVG, we sort of selected the SVG, it already exists, so we don't need to create it. We're getting the width and height that we set for that SVG. Um, we're creating a new map object. Um, if you're not familiar with that, go and look up the MDN documentation and look up map object. Yeah, ES6, this is ES6 syntax. The next thing we do is define a path function. So this is a function that uh, given a um, geography will describe that in terms of, of uh, in terms a path will understand. So once we have our path SVG element, we give it um, a GeoJSON object, it will turn that into um, a, 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 a path description. So it will basically draw um, what that geography looks like. The next thing we do is define the x function, which is um, a, a linear scale function. So um, effectively, we give it um, any kind of number in a range, and it will associate, create a kind of linear relationship between um, uh, between one of these numbers and one of these numbers. So um, this is effectively a useful way of converting uh, one unit to another. So um, we'll be using that later on. The next thing is another scale function where we are determining the color um, based off of a threshold. So um, this is where the kind of percentages come into play where you'll see, um, uh, say, a percentage of unemployment. And we're going to translate that into um, instead of like in our scale, uh, our linear scale function where we're translating one number into another number, we're going to um, sort of translate that number into a, we're going to put it into a bucket. And if it's in um, a bucket between one and two or two and four or whatnot, it will be um, translated into a color. So single number just goes in, um, a color value comes out. Um, then we have group, uh, so we've got G, uh, we're appending to the SVG uh, an empty group, 
called key. So this is our legend that we're going to move to um, 040. And adding to the script, this is where we add in our, um, I believe it was eight or nine M rectangles with the different fill color from the range. So um, as you see here, color, range, map. So we're basically iterating through map is a, an iterative function. So we, for every, um, for every iteration, we're going to run this anonymous function. And effectively, we're just going to the, give us the light, gives the light blue and all the way to the, um, uh, all the way to the last blue in the range. And for each one of these, we're going to append a rectangle, give it a height of eight. And then we are going to decide um, the, uh, tr uh, we're going to try, oh yes, of course, the X coordinate. Um, the width is just going to be um, from the start of one to the end of the other or vice versa. Um, and then fill is, uh, comes from, um, okay, fill comes from the range. So we have a light blue to dark blue. Not the most interesting part in this. Um, the next part is just to add the text that says unemployment rate. Finally, we have a group where we're going to add, oh, sorry, we're not adding a group. We're adding to this group that we already talked about where we're adding the, um, the basically the, um, the little tick indicators with um, the percentage associated with um, the start and end of, of a certain color range. Finally, we get something kind of a bit more interesting here. So d3.tsv. So this is the first time we use one of the d3 fetch functions. So I'm going to go over to um, d3 fetch as this is a separate library. And these are kind of convenience functions for going off, as I said, going off to um, a file elsewhere, um, load and parsing it, and then um, and then doing something with it. Now these are asynchronous functions. So that means that they uh, may take a shorter or longer amount of time to um, load, download and process the data that comes in and parse it. So um, you need to kind of handle uh, these functions a little bit differently from writing normal JavaScript, right? Normally if I say I want to go away um, and do something to a line of text, maybe turn it around the other way, then I know that the line that I write after it will just happen synchronously one after the other. That's not the case with asynchronous functions. Um, this is a pretty big topic in JavaScript. So if you're not familiar with it, then I really suggest that um, you go and have a look at some examples and, and get your head around um, uh, in asynchronous JavaScript and the concept of promises. Um, because each one of these, if we look at the API reference, each one of these functions returns a promise. And so a promise object. So um, we've got helper functions for CSV, DSV, HTML image, JSON. So we can fire a uh, URL off to get a JSON file or a TSV file. And once that resolves and it parses it, uh, we can call then and then throw in a function to it to um, to run once uh, it has gone and completed that task. So in this case, we're going off to fetch unemployment.tsv, which I'm kind of on my example, I'm hosting in the same place. So um, it just sits alongside the HTML file. So uh, you'll notice that this is a relative path. I've not actually typed in HTTP blah, 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 blah. Um, <clears throat> then when, once we've got that unemployment data um, for each row, this is where um, I'm, I'm running for each on each row and I'm populating my set object, which I created um, higher up in the code here. So unemployment is a map object. So I'm kind of populating out that map object. 
Um, and then the next part is I'm doing the same again. I'm using D3 fetch, uh, D3 fetch, D3 fetch and JSON. And this is where we go off and get some topo JSON of, um, of the US. Once that's done, we call then and we pass into then the callback that we want to do once we've got this um, JSON file. Just to let you see, um, we can explore the map object that I mentioned there um, as it's available from the It is available from the console. So here um, you'll see this is the map object and effectively we've got the ID kind of um, used as an index and pointing to um, value 5.1 which is the as you saw earlier that's the um, percentage of unemployment rate. The other thing I've logged out here is um, that JSON file which we explored earlier with our geographic data. So we've got counties We've got 3,142 counties. Uh, I guess that sounds right. It looks like it states. 51 states, I think. Yeah, that's that's right, isn't it? Um, okay. So back to the code. Um, so you'll see that, so this is, um, again, this is an asynchronous example. So once we've got the unemployment data, so then once we've finally got that, we populate that map object and once we've done that then we go off and get the uh, geographic data and once that's done we get to call ready which is right here so ready first thing we do with ready is we log out um, what we've been past the U us data um, and the next thing we do is to add that group that's going to house all of our county path so and we've got a select all path, data and enter. So for each element in the data, we're going to create a path element. And the data in this case, um, we're going to use topo JSON to apply a, a transformation using the feature function. Now, um, you could go and have a little look at the topo JSON documentation. Um, essentially what feature does is it translates topo JSON into GeoJSON, which is what D3 um, tends to understand using um, when it comes to geographic functions and drawing paths. So in this case, um, we have defined path using D3 GeoPath. So that expects GeoJSON. TopoJSON is, is, is effectively just an extension of GeoJSON that is a bit more efficient way of um, uh, of describing geographic data. Um, this actually will come into play a little bit later. I'll um, maybe show you what um, you can gain with that. But um, suffice to say at the moment, it's a uh, it's almost more compressed way of storing geographic data. Um, so next thing we do then is because we have those county IDs, um, associated with the, the, the geographies, we can index these uh, by looking up our unemployment map and get our rate. So we can um, assign for each data element, we can assign the rate. That will just return the rate and we return that and pass it into the color scale. So number goes in, we get color out and we assign the fill, value, uh, fill attribute. Uh, finally, for each of those geographies. We've converted them to GeoJSON, so we pass them into path. We get that path description that goes in D, and that helps um, define the shape of the path. And then finally, we append title, um, and this helps us achieve our tooltip where we hover over and get a rate, and we get percentage value. Now, I mentioned that we use topo JSON, and it kind of stores um, topologies a bit differently from um, GeoJSON, the kind of standard that that um, that D3GS expects. So I'm going to show you an example of uh, where 
the next part we use we append another path which as you remember is the state boundaries so in this case instead of using feature we use um we're going to use the mesh function and the best way to understand the mesh function is to take a look at another example created by Mike, Mike Bostop where you see the border mesh here effectively what's being done here is the borders between um, uh, of, of the state borders of California are being highlighted now the they're highlighted because they, they overlap and effectively if we didn't do that we'd be drawing them uh, twice or multiple times over so this is one of the ways that topojson achieves an efficiency or kind of compression over geojson is that we don't need to store we don't store um, overlapping lines or um, bits of geography so we save a little bit of space um, but it also means that we can identify where these parts are so um, you'll see here there's a filtering function so it will this that's what this is effectively doing is saying is if that line is the same as this one then we don't need to do it we can just cut it out um, and once again um, mesh converts things into geojson um, so once we get that data we can um, just use our path function to draw it and that's it I think we've covered everything from top to bottom I hope that was helpful if you'd like to compare to another example that's very similar, um, but a little bit more sophisticated in terms of the way the code is refactored and uses observable, you could look up um, the most kind of recent iteration um, of this map created by Mike, and it's hosted on observable HQ. And in this example, um, the notebook has um, the core path refactored into a function. So there's a bit of a different way of organizing the code going on here, but effectively everything that's going on is achieves pretty much the same thing. Um, this example is quite nice because it gives you a function that you could use to um, apply to different uh, different geography or different GeoJSON files. So um, you could achieve a kind of similar map, uh, not of the US, but of somewhere else. Anyway, I hope that was useful and you can catch us another time in another video.